Lightroom, I'm going to show you two things. Um, I'm going to show you how to analyze the color gamut of the printer and what it's doing and the colors that it is able to print. And I'm also going to show you how to recognize what your monitor actually sees. All right. So you want to be able to match these up. So what your printer can print and what your monitor can display is exactly what you get back from the printing company. So let's jump in to the tips. So for me, it's just easier, hi Disney, it's just easier for me to job order my prints out when you think about the cost to print per image. I mean, you pay for every mistake you make when you, uh, when you print them at home and when you think about how long it actually takes for you to get the crop correct, to make sure that your dimensions are correct and that your colors are correct. I mean, you can print a smaller test image, but I've just personally decided that it's actually cheaper for me um, when you're talking about archival ink, archival paper, um, quality assurance to just job order it out. Um, you want to be sure to download the ICC profile and all that is from the printing company is the color space. Okay. So it's the international color consortium of a particular device, i.e. What does cherry red look like to your printer? Okay, does it look like picnic table red? Does it look like apple red? Okay, it's just basically making sure that what you see is what you get. So you can get that warm and fuzzy before you send your prints off to someone else. I'm gonna get into soft proofing in this episode to kind of explain the best way to make sure you know the product you're gonna be getting back before you job order your prints out. Now printing at home is still an option and I'll leave some links in the description below for some printers that I actually recommend for at home printing. You can do it, but you just got to think what is your intent for using the printer? How often you're going to be printing prints and um, do you want to make the personal investment? So once you've decided which company you're going to use for your printing, or even if you choose to print at home, you can go ahead and download the color profile or the ICC profile for that respective printer. So if you're job ordering your prints out, you can just Google that company for in this instance, I, sh I showed you how to Google Impix Pro. And from there you can download the ICC profile. And then this is a Mac computer. So you can just navigate from library to your color sync, to your profiles go ahead and drop it in there and then it will be available for your use in Lightroom. All right guys, so you're probably wondering, what do I do with the ICC profile once I have it inside of Lightroom? Okay, well, first thing you wanna do open up your original image where you did your edits, okay? But that is our baseline edit. So if I wanna print on my home printer, I'll just use that printer's ICC profile to check how my print's gonna look. If I'm gonna job order it out to Costco, to Impix, to Nation, whatever printing service that I use, I'm gonna use that particular ICC profile. But I'm gonna check that image using a process called soft proofing. So in Lightroom, you just go down here, you click on this, and now you're in the soft proofing window. Now, what I would recommend, as opposed to making edits for print in your original edit, um, I would suggest that you create a proof copy. That way, like I said, you don't mess up your baseline edit, okay, that you could potentially use for different printers and such. So we're gonna go ahead and create a proof copy. So now any changes we make to get our print right with our particular printer are not gonna affect our original image. Okay, so now we are in the soft proofing window. You can see it has a histogram up here. Over here, if I hover over this, this is showing the color gamut space of the printer that you'll be using. So if I had an at-home Canon printer, this is basically gonna show me if there's any colors that my printer can't print. And this is basically gonna show me any colors that my monitor can't display. So this is the monitor color gamut and this is your printer color gamut. So if I select this, Okay, there is no issue. I have this printer profile. This is almost simulating as if I was going to print off the printer myself. Okay, there are no colors. I don't see any hotspot areas that this printer cannot print. However, if I click over here to my monitor, there are a few colors in this edit that my actual monitor cannot display. Therefore, I actually don't have an accurate depiction of what my picture will come out as. So what can you do about this? Well, you can go ahead and make a few changes to your edit. Okay. So I would say a great place to start would be in the saturation. So all I'm going to do is drop the saturation just a bit. You can see if I go up, okay, boom, it can't show all those colors. But if I drop it down, 
just want to go right until it goes away. Okay, and that's the least amount of changes I'm going to make. Now my monitor can display exactly what this printer is going to print. And you can just mess with the different sliders um, to make adjustments to either accommodate the printer color gamut or your monitor's color gamut. Okay, and now once you have all the colors the way you want, this is what your print is actually going to look like. All right, once you have these changes made, go ahead and right click, export. Okay, and now I'm gonna walk you through what you need to focus on. All right, so check out file settings. All right, although we shoot in RAW, we're going to export as a JPEG. All right, go ahead and keep your quality at 100%. You can drop this a bit if you're just using this for the web. However, since we want to print a hard copy, we're going to go ahead and keep our quality as nice as possible. For the color space, we're going to go ahead and use sRGB. This is one of the most common color spaces for most printing companies. I mean, there's other options here, Display P3, Pro Photo, RGB. This is great. However, this is a very wide color gamut, and a lot of companies actually don't support this. This Adobe RGB is actually legacy. So go ahead and select sRGB. No need to limit the file size. You want as large of a file as possible to maintain the most uh, quality out of our image. Now, we're going to go ahead and select resize to fit along the long edge. All right, there are a couple of different things you can actually select here, but I'm going to say longest edge. So let's say you wanted to print a 5 by 7 print. Okay, the longest edge would be 7. So I'm going to go ahead and click 7 here and make sure the unit selected is inches. So now I have a 5 by 7 inch print. For resolution, go ahead and keep that at 300. Uh, for metadata, that's up to personal preference. Watermarking, if you want to put a watermark on your print. And then you just go ahead and click export. And that is going to be all you need to do. I use a company called Impix for all of my hard copy photographs. They have two versions of the site, a consumer version and a pro version. The main difference between the pro version and the consumer version is that the consumer version, they actually color correct your prints for you. So they actually go in and take some action on your behalf, a little bit of liberty. What you see may not exactly be exactly what you get. However, on the pro version, they do not automatically color correct your photos. I mean, you still can request that from the lab um, for an additional fee, but that's not something that they're gonna do automatically on the pro version of the site. Also, they're gonna make some software available to you for easier uploads for mass prints. There's a few more options as far as what you can order, canvas, metal prints, and different things like that. Um, also, uh, one of the other advantages is they send you some test prints. So they'll send you five test prints. You'll upload some images. They'll make sure that your monitor and your colors, everything's calibrated to what's going to be printed so you can get the best product back possible. I mean, so these are different options. It's not an additional fee to be uh, a part of the Impix Pro uh, line or, or service, shall I say. They use actually the same printers for the company. It's just a difference in, in uploads and how much liberty you want the lab to take on your behalf and a few more options. But this is not the only printer company. I've just personally had a good experience with them as far as quality, uh, quality assurance on a consistent basis and great packaging when they deliver it to you. This is not a sponsored video by any means. Um, this is just my personal opinion. <laughs>